Hi everyone, welcome to part 10 of my Cobbles and Catacombs card reviews. Only yesterday I was saying that I was quite impressed with the cards that Blizzard have been releasing. However, today I'm actually a little bit upset by two of the cards, so we'll get to that a bit later. But just before we start, important to note that the release date of the expansion has been announced, so it's coming out on December the 7th, so it's not long now, so make sure you're, you're saving your gold. Get those games in, complete your daily quests so you can buy some new, new packs. Also, I'm going to be doing daily videos with the new card releases as they come out. There'll be new cards released every day, so be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. To start with, I'm going to cover two cards together, and that is because they're both cards I'm a little bit upset about. And uh, they're both mage cards. The first one is a five mana epic card called Deck of Wonders. And what it does is it shuffles five scrolls into your deck and when drawn it casts a random spell. So this is very similar to the ambush mechanic we've seen with a couple of other cards. When you draw the scroll, the scroll it casts a random spell for free and then you recycle another card. So it's interesting in itself and I'll get to why it's, um, I'm a bit upset about it in a minute. So the second one is the Leyline Manipulator. It costs four mana. It's a rare card for the mage again. It's got great stats so it's 4 mana, 5 health, 4 attack, so that is really good health, um, stats. It's an elemental, so again, that's another great tag at the moment. We've seen some good elementals introduced already. And But the battle cry is, if you're holding any cards that didn't start in your deck, reduce their cost by 2. And this is really important for Mage, and this card, Leyline Manipulator out, out of the 2, this one's really good, and I think this one's insane, actually. I think it's... Um, it's started really well, it's an elemental, and it has a really strong battle cry. And also, even if you don't, if you play it without the battle cry even working, it's a strong minion to play on turn four, and with the elemental synergies, it can be used really well. So, the reason I'm upset about these two cards is um, both of them play into the quest mage, open the way gate, and I dislike quest mage a lot. And that is not to say that you shouldn't play it because I'm sure if you play the deck it's fun to play and it's in the game so you shouldn't feel bad about playing it but the reason I dislike it is because I don't like playing against it and it's not because I lose every time it's just because I don't have any choice in the game I just play my cards onto the board and if they've got the cards they needed to do to complete their quest and fireball my face then I lose and if they don't have those cards then I win so it's just it's just boring to play against, and often you, you play your minions onto the board, they freeze your minions. If you've got space, you play another minion, they freeze your minions. Then next turn, maybe your board's full, so you don't do anything. And you know, you're just waiting, and then sometimes they draw three or four um, ice blocks, so you're just breaking the ice blocks, and that's why I dislike it. And I don't think that it needs any more help. I don't think it needs any more cards to make that deck stronger, and both of these do. But the Leyline Manipulator in particular is where I think there is a problem because they can, Battle Cry, if you're holding any cards that didn't start in your deck, reduce their cost by two. So this isn't just spells, this is minions as well. So often what um, the Quest Mage wants to do is use Simulacrum on their Sorcerer's Apprentice so that they can get um, another Apprentice so that they can play enough Apprentices onto the board that they get free fireballs and that's how they, they kill you. Well, if they've got any Apprentices in their hand and any spells that they've drawn from Kabbalist Tome, for example, then they can just play this 4-mana card and that all those spells are reduced by 2, the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice will go down to 0 and it just makes it so much easier for them to complete the quest. Now, I'm happy about the Leyline Manipulator going into Elemental decks because I'm really interested in that uh, new deck archetype. I'd, I'd like to see it played. Um, Elemental Mage is one that I'd like to, to try. What I just don't like is that it synergizes with Quest Mage, which I just don't think they need to encourage people to play that because it's been played. We all know what the combo is. It's complicated and fun to play, but it's just horrible to play against. So that's why I don't like it. But these are going into the game now. Hopefully Deck of Wonders will turn out to be not very good. I, I don't think it is a very good card, to be honest, Deck of Wonders, but I think Leyline Manipulator is excellent. 
don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one, guys, because I I'm, I'm a bit fed up of playing against Quest Mage. Next card I think is pretty cool. It's a five mana one one, so terrible stats. Of course, it's called the Furbolg Moss Binder, but it has a battle cry of transform a, transform a friendly minion into a six six elemental. Now this is quite good because it, it works a little bit like Evolve, where if you've got a minion on the board, you can trade it into your opponent's minion. It's it's got weakened health, and you transfer it into a six six elemental, so you gain a lot of a lot of value that way. We have seen a card similar to this in the game already. This is the Big Time Racketeer. It's a 6 mana, so it costs 1 more mana. 1-1 one, one card that summons a 6-6 six, six Ogre as its battle cry. So the the downside to the Moss Binder is you do need to have a minion on the board. But the upside, of course, is it costs 1 mana less. And um, it transfers it into an elemental. So in elemental decks, that would work quite well, particularly if you've got Frostlich Jaina out already. That gives you then a um, elemental with life steal. So I, I quite like this card. Um, the pro problems with it is that, of course, it it's not an elemental. So if you do play this, you do ruin your elemental chain. So if you're playing an elemental deck, then that's going to be a problem. There's some cool combos that you can do with it, though. Uh, if you are a priest and you use Potion of Madness on your opponent's minion, it, Potion of Madness only gives you control of that minion until the end of the turn. Well, if you bring it onto your side of the board and then play uh, Furbolg on, on that minion, it will then transform into a 6-6 six, six elemental, which will be yours, and it won't go back to your opponent's um, side of the board at the end of the turn. So I do quite like it. Whether or not you see play, perhaps not. Um, I think it's mostly put in there as a little bit of a nerf to evolve because this is a 5 mana minion and if you evolve your 4 mana minion into this of course it would just be a 1-1 one, because one you, you won't get the battle cry so interesting card um, not essential I don't think but I do quite like it next up is a new type of card being introduced into the game and it's called Unidentified Shield it's a warrior common card it, it costs six mana and what it does is when you put it into your deck it has four different bonus effects and when you draw it you will randomly get one of those effects on this card so when played you will get five armor plus that random effect so the the random effects are spiked shield which is uh, equip a 5-2 weapon along with the five armor tower shield uh, gain five armor and then gain ten more armor a serrated shield which is gain five armor deal five damage so that's to face or to a minion so that could be quite important and uh, rune shield is gain five armor summon a five five golem so this card is clearly designed for a control warrior deck which i'm quite happy about because control warrior at the moment isn't isn't very good so it'll be interesting to see if this card can strengthen control warrior the downsides of the card are that you never know what the effect's going to be, so it's always going to be random. So it's you can't it's not choose one, it is a random effect. So each of the effects individually are quite good though. So uh, for six mana, let's look at Spike Shield. Six mana, you can gain five armor and then play an Arcanite Reaper, which costs five mana in the standard game. So six mana, that's that's okay. Um, and good for a control warrior because you're gaining a bit of health and then gaining a way to remove minions. Tower Shield, um, gaining 15 armor. Well, it's potentially a bit too um, slow in the meta as it is now, but if the game slows down, which I think we're seeing quite a few anti-aggro cards come in, maybe the game will slow down, then gaining 15 armor can be really good. And it also um, synergizes well with the new legendary for Warrior, yep. Uh, the Serrated Shield... Gain 5 armor, deal 5 damage. Well, again, that's really good for a control warrior because you're basically gaining 5 armor and being able to just deal 5 damage to remove a minion from the board. Um, and then summoning a golem as well also helps. So all all of these cards, I think, are, have got their uh, are relatively strong in their own right. So I think this card will see play in control warrior and I'm, I'm quite looking forward to trying that deck out. Next up, we've got another newly introduced Rogue Secret. So Rogue hasn't had secrets up until this new expansion. This one's called Evasion. It costs two mana again. 
and it's an epic card and the secret is after your hero takes damage become immune this turn so this is quite an interesting card it's very similar to ice block i don't think it's as as good as ice block but what it does is when you take your hero takes damage it then prevents you from taking any more damage that turn so potentially it, you can die so if you play this when you've only got five health if the opponent manages to do six damage to you you're gonna die but, but what it is is it's extra healing for a class that doesn't actually have any healing so rogue typically struggles to stay alive now if you manage to play this um, card evasion and your opponent just hits you for one damage from one of their minions or something and then the rest of the turn you are immune that can be really strong because it can save you a lot of a lot of damage which is essentially healing situations where it would be really good uh, you could play this against quest mage so that's quite good um, so if you've got this out and the quest mage tries to play their quest then it does it does help you unfortunately that only stalls them out for one turn but that might be enough for you to then kill them the next turn um, it can be really good with against a token shaman for example so if you manage to play this when your opponent's setting up to do a bloodlust turn so sometimes you can tell that they've they've put lots of low cost minions down onto the board and you know you think well maybe they're going to evolve well if they don't play their evolve it probably means that the next turn they're going to play bloodlust um, and if you could play this well then you can save yourself a whole lot of damage from the bloodlust which is it's really quite cool overall quite a welcome card it's going to help rope because it essentially gives them some healing however you're not going to be able to play this in a keleseth deck because it does cost two mana so if you are playing prince keleseth in your rogue then obviously this is one that you can't play okay everyone thanks for watching make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this i'll be doing updates daily as the cards get released Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.